firstly, I mean, it comes down to the location of the property. A lot of people, you know, the first thing they do is they're going to buy an investment property and they're like, okay, let's go out there. Let's go out and look at properties. It's like, hang on. Have you done your research on the areas first? Have you broken down the state first? So you firstly, you've got to look at Australia wide, not just be looking in your backyard. And for me, I've always been like that. Okay. It's got nothing to do with where I live. It's got nothing to do with the demographics. It's really coming down to why is that area going to grow? And that's all I'm looking for. So what I'm, what I'm doing firstly is looking at the state by state. Where is the economy at in that state? You know, is it growing economically? Is population growing? And once I figured out roughly the state that we're buying in, and again, that's going to also come back down to roughly the yields or re- rent return that you're looking for as well. I then hone down into the state. And then from there, I start to draw sort of a radius out of the CBD. And it's generally an hour out of the CBD that I draw that radius. And then I just start to, you know, segment each market there and each council and start to look and break those councils down. Then from there, I break down the councils and work out where, what councils are growing and why they're growing, what's making them more livable. Um, I ask generally 10 questions on that. And I, I, continue to repeat those same 10 questions for every market that I buy in so I can see the differences over time. Um, And also I can look back at the markets that have doubled and see why they doubled. Um, And then from there, once I've broken down that location, that's when it comes down to, okay, we've found the council. Now we've found the suburbs within that council. Now it's time to hone down and, and actually get on the ground and start to know that market intimately. I've got to know the suburbs. Um, when it comes down to knowing the suburbs, you've got to know the good streets. You've got to know the bad streets. You've got to know why things are selling higher in one street compared to another or one pocket to another. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand that where they'll buy it in a pocket and it's cheaper by 50 grand than another pocket and they buy the cheap one because it's cheap, but it might be in housing commission area. It might be that pocket has 40% housing, whereas the other pockets, um, you know, majority owner occupied. So you've got to know that market so well that when it comes time to negotiate with, with an agent, that you know that market, you know the streets better than they do because that's what they do every day is they walk those streets, they uh, let a box drop, they sell property in those streets. So they know more than you at the start. You've got to learn that market so that you know more than them when it comes time to purchase. Um, and then from there, like I said, once it comes down to, to purchasing the property, Again, it comes down to, you know, where's the good streets and bad streets? Where are you going to select? What type of dwelling you're looking for? So what's in demand in the area? You're always going to be looking at what's in demand in the area. You don't want to go buy a unit where families are living. You don't want to go buy a family house where people have to live in a unit because it's expensive. So you want to always be catering to the people that are going to be renting the property um, first. So you know what type of dwelling you're buying. Um, And then it just comes down to, you know, looking at things like, when I'm assessing a property, so let's say I'm going to a property and I'm walking through that property, what I'm looking at things like is the condition. What What is the condition of this property? Is there anything that needs to be done to the property? Because I need to actually start to add that into what I believe true market value is for the property. So if it needs paint, it needs carpets, it may need a kitchen, I've got to work out, okay, so if it needs a kitchen, that's going to cost me $15,000. I need to work out what the true value of the, the property is compared to other properties and then work out, okay, it needs to be $15,000 less because I need to put a kitchen into it. Um, so working out what that property needs. Then from there, I go in there and look at things like the, the house to land um, value ratio. So what I look at is to determine an investment is I've got to look at it and say, okay, how much am I putting into the land of this, this property and how much am I putting into the house of this property? What's the ratios roughly? If I'm putting 70% into the land and maybe 30% into the house, I know that the land goes up in value and I know the house depreciates over time. So it's a pretty good outcome. And I know that I'm putting most of my money into the appreciating part of the asset. Um, whereas if it's the other way around and I'm putting you know 70% into the building and putting only 30% into the house, um, then sorry into the land then i know at that point that you know my house is going to depreciate it might not go up as much as i probably wanted it to so you've got to look at uh, the investment as a whole and go through it and look at it as a condition look at its true value and then from there you've got to break it down and say where is my money actually going in this deal i like deals where um i i typically look at them and say you know what if I buy this, let's say it's a let's say it's a four bedroom house, four bedroom, two bathroom, two car garage house. It's on a six hundred square meter block. Let's say that if I worked out the price per square meter of what you know somebody's selling land for, 
uh, and let's say it was $400,000 for the land is, is what it would be worth. And yet I'm paying $450,000 for the whole deal, which is the house and the land. I know that a builder can't go out there and buy that block of land, put a house on it for $50,000. So if the market there is going to go up, I know that those properties are going to go up because if a builder wants to build or sell a house and land package to somebody else, they're probably paying maybe in the sixes for that. Um, whereas I'm paying mid fours because I'm buying something where the house has already actually done the depreciating side of things. It's already depreciated and I'm putting all my money into that land. So it's, I guess, being conscious on where you're putting your money.